Hello, welcome back. You're here with Clint, Clint's workshop. So it's nice to see that you could join me again. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, something a little bit different again, although it's very basic. Um, I want to be looking to show you a little closer look at the siege milling machine, particularly the way I set up the um, um, the mounting blocks for uh, elevation for uh, leveling the leveling blocks if you like and that that's there that's the leveling blocks so we're going to look at that but first <coughs> I mean I'm going to make I'm going to actually make one and show you how I do it. it you might think it's quite simple but you're going to get some hints and tips along the way that will be very useful um, however first of all I have to say this. <clears throat> the last 28 days, we've got 16 new subscribers. <laughs> I'm just delighted about that. It's good. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the last week, we actually got uh, seven, uh, seven, seven sub subscribers. Some of which have I've got names, but other others have not. To <clears throat> registered to reveal the, ne the names or location on their personal preference uh, settings but those that have and those that haven't thanks very much <laughs> I appreciate all of it all of your time and then um, so last week we've got uh, your mama thanks and then we've got uh, Baz X one five seven. Thank you, Baz. That's uh, nice of you. And we've got Mega Moss thirty four. So the not the next one I've got recorded uh, is Wilson Lee's, and that was six days ago. So it's it's very, <coughs> it's very good. And also I tell you what, I've got some very interesting comments, really interesting ones, which I've replied to. I always reply to the comments. And if I don't reply, I might not have seen them, if, if they're out of sync or something. But I, I do check, I reply to everyone. Very interesting comments, which will you'll find will be useful, uh, not just for me and the person who sent it. It could be useful for other, other viewers as well. So that's interesting, useful comments. Keep sending them in. And, uh, you know, more subscribers, I really need some. I'm not. I'm never going to get to the thirty-four thousand, <laughs> but it's a good start anyway. So I'm pleased about that. So first of all, then we're going to look at this. Uh, um, mm, siege milling machine. Just it's a siege vertical mill, okay. And in particular, in particular, in particular. Under there is a leveling back, a leveling uh, block. So we're going to show us another leveling block. So first things first. Oops. We have to get some material. So just move the camera over a bit. So I get some material. Uh, I'll find a material. And here I've got some uh, one inch diameter bar. Okay, so I'm not going to bore you too much with this, but I'm going to have to saw a bit off it because the length, the diameter of this bar will not go through the headstock bore. Because it only takes about three quarters of an inch. So normally I would just push it through and feed it through and part it off. Can't in this instance, so I'm going to mount it in the vise and saw it off by hand. Now, I'm not going to... I'm not going to bore you with watching me saw it off. Not all of it, but I'm going to start it off because I'll tell you, Sometimes we've got new people new into engineering environments 
and uh, <coughs> basic use of hand tools and things. So I'll just make a couple of hints and tips for those specifically and even for others who may have not realised they might have gone into bad habits. So here we are. Um, this is the vice which okay I'm going to focus now on the, on the vice. Um, that's been featured in a previous video on how to mount a vice and you notice that on this vice there's the vice jaws and here in the vice jaws I've got some soft jaws now little hint here You don't have to go and pay. <laughs> you don't have to go and pay fifteen pound or twenty five dollars for for some uh, uh, soft jaws because these I just made out of a sixteenth of an inch uh, aluminium plate. A few holes drilled in for, for other purposes and things like that, but it, it serves a purpose for this and uh, cheap too, very effective. <laughs> you might think they're a bit worn. But I have, been, I have been using them for the last 25 years, <laughs> or maybe more. So they work well, and uh, and that's it. <coughs> Incident, incidentally, I just mentioned dollars, um, how much you could save. Um, because I'll just fasten this device here. Okay, so there My viewers um, are, are varied across the world, and Mainly uh, what's recorded is, is, is the UK, uh, maybe Australia, New Zealand. But interesting fact is, which is very, very encouraging, 17% of the views that I had this last 28 days uh, have been come from the United States and 17% of viewing time. So it's good. I've done, I've done this business I'm in the States. I want to do a lot more. So uh, later though, I'll, I'll tell you more about that later. So first of all, we're going to saw a piece off here. So, um, how much to saw off? Right. <clears throat> the actual, the actual uh, distant uh, block there, the uh, leveling block, is only about an inch uh, wide length, if you like. So, I'm thinking that. Uh, I'll cut about four, four or five inch off this. Uh, so let me get my saw. <laughs> now come back. So here's where I'm not going to bore you, but um, I'm going to talk about not a bad guess. I just guessed that you saw me put it in, so I'm just going to take about five inch there. Never mark it and then right. So. What I was saying, this is, this is, this is a hint and tip here for those of you not used to working uh, with this kind of uh, material and, and engineering stuff. You notice I'm at this side of the vice, okay? Because I generally am right handed, although. I'm a little bit ambidextrous as well. But if you're left handed, you would cut from this side. It's safer because it, I'm cutting the right hand side here. So if it 
forth so quickly I'm tending to go away from the vice. The same with the left hand person. Um, if a left hand person tried to try to do that, it's no good because it's putting the weight over here. So you need to get in that case at that side, and you're not likely to catch your hand on on the vice. So to start it off, so I'm not going to bore you, but for those who's not used to it, you'll notice you need to use a full length of of the blade, okay? And you're getting a nice steady stand, get firm feet apart, get a firm base. Don't press on. If you press on, only one thing may happen. Before you go through it, it'll break the blade. And then you're up the creek. So um, <coughs> I'm going to carry on with this and I'll get. To, I'm not going to bore you too much with this, so I'll pause the video and get back to you when I've nearly sawed it off. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we've nearly sawed it through now, and when you get to this stage, it's best to support it slightly, but don't lift it up, but support it with your left hand and just finish it off the last two or three strokes like that then you don't have a uncomfortably heavy weight dropping on your toes gently does it all the time so that's that okay so I've got the piece set up in the in the lathe you've noticed I've put a larger chuck on because the small one I had um, wasn't suitable for this particular bar. It didn't open up enough. Well, it would, but it wouldn't go in far enough. Anyway, here we are. Let's, set, let's start machining on this. First thing to do is to machine this face here. Get it squared off. Um, I'm feeding by hand just to face this surface here. And this is a new camera position I've been experimenting with. It's a little bit safer for me. And I think you'll be able to see everything there. I hope so anyway. So, uh, I think you can. So here's the face of it. You might not be able to see the face exactly because the camera is just not quite far enough over. Uh, but anyway, you can see that, it, that that's the face we're looking at. And it's done. I can tilt it over you'll be able to see. I think it's where the lens of this camera is. Uh, uh, it's just a smartphone one, you know. I've not got the latest Nikon or, or something like that. But uh, anyway, I think we can say this is okay if we... I don't think it's too bad really. Hmm. Now I'll face that off. But what I want to do is to that's a rough bar at the moment on, on the on the outside diameter. So I just want to face that off to make it a bit clearer. Uh, a little bit cleaner I should say. So what I'm going to do is to engage the uh, the feed on this. Okay. And then See what happens. Okay. Feel the seat. Increase the speed. about 
Well, this looks like it's um, something to clean it, the diameter is not terrifically important. And uh, I've just engaged the auto feed on this. And I can see now that it's not clearing the uh, diameter, so I'll stop it. And you'll see it's uh, it's not exactly true because this uh, after all this is only extruded bar uh, it doesn't uh, always run true so um <clears throat> uh, depending on the length as well so i'm going to take a cut that will clear it up on in the first instance on on one cut so let's have a look at there i've, I've turned it down in here so it's missing there so I'm going to come in, it's not a lot really, we've got what, one, two, three, about five thou, maybe five ten thou altogether, five thou on the radius, thousandth of an inch that is. Okay, so let's go. Try now. I think that's cleaning it up. Let's have a look at it and see. There you are, it's cleaned it up all the way around. As I say, I'm not altogether uh, concerned about the diameter because uh, <coughs> it, it doesn't really matter to 10 or 20 thou even uh, for this particular application. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, is to go all the way along. Okay. I'm working towards the chuck. So you have to be careful not to run really into the chicken cross. Uh, on this setup here, I've got a parting tool here which is clearing the chuck, and I always check things like that. The uh, slideways, the beds, the wee ways, and uh, everything else is lubricated. Uh, so it's cutting quite nicely. So it's very nice. I, I shall stop it before it gets to the chuck. And I can use the material for something else as well. I'm only going to use about an inch in this instance, but maybe I want to use it and make two or four. Well, I don't want to at all, I'm just going to make one so that you can see how I do it. The tool's cutting nicely. Really, when you're in the chuck, when you're on power feed, if you just release the power feed clutch mechanism and then continue by hand, like so, and you can get close up with chuck, okay? So that's that. I'm going to stop the machine now. And you can see it's quite a nice smooth finish. Uh, you can get a different finish actually. Um, if I reverse the tumble of reverse gear there, and I'm going <coughs> to. <coughs> so it backwards again on the same cut. Let's see what happens, shall we? That's the same cut that's on. You see the difference on the, on the, on the finish. Let's just make it in a slight shaving niche on the point. Um, I've not. Uh, there any hole in other points, it's uh, been okay from the last time I used it. And it's certainly alright for this particular finish. Uh, the, the auto feed I put on is quite fine. But I think you can see, or well, I can see from here, I don't know if you can, that there is a distinct difference between the finish. It's much shinier and uh, I don't think the camera can pick it up, but uh, uh, there you go. Let's see. Yeah, this is the boring bit, but uh, I'm not going to stop the video just for this bit. It's only a minute or two anyway. So I'm going to show you something else. 
just took a slight cut right to the end. So that's it. Now, can you see it better there? Maybe, I don't know. So what I'm going to do now is, because it's a little sharp edge there, I'm going to remove that because it's not desirable to have that there. And, oh, what's happening here? Oh, the light seems to have uh, altered. Um, so there's a slight sharp edge there which I want to put a little bevel on. Now normally you could use, I can twist that tool around and put a bevel on that way, but uh, you remember when I was parting off, uh, I've got a little parting tool here. It might be easier for me to do it this way. So I'll use the parting tool. <laughs> You've got to find out what applications you can, can do. You only get this with experience. Normally you would do it with uh, maybe the angle on the first tool I used. But uh, anyway, this will do it. Enjoy it. Okay. So all it needed, I needed a little edge to take that sharp edge off there. You can put you can put a bigger angle on it if you want to, but it's okay for this purpose. So that's that. <coughs> now I'm going to um, get the party tool back into a different position and reposition the uh, this one. But what I'm going to do now is. You might think I'm going to part it off, well I'm not, not just at a moment, because although <coughs> it's, a, it's a backing, it's a adjusting block to get the machine, the siege milling machine at level, um, what I'm going to do is to do a hole. I'm going to put a hole through it. It doesn't need a hole through it, but it helps in other matters, which I shall show you. I'll show you why, why later. In the meantime, if you want to have a guess at why I'm doing that, uh, have a guess. So, that's that. I'm going to disengage the, the, the power feed and put this into neutral. Because then it doesn't bind up as you're turning the wheels. Uh, <coughs> that's a little hint. Another little hint and tip. If you're not using power feed, this uh, disengaged it. Disengage it. Now I'm going to go in here about an inch. Okay. So I'm looking. I've just got that about a quarter of an inch there. So if I take that depth to an inch and a quarter, um, that will give me the depth. It helps when you're parting off. And uh, it also up on another thing which I want you to be thinking about while I'm doing it. So uh, here we go. I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, well, it's not yours, the centre drill. Well, I haven't. But it's not particularly important for this job. Uh, this is a, the drills are pretty sharp and uh, normally you would use a sensor drill but in this instance 
when you get experience and you know how to feel for it, you're going to need it. Now I've just come in about, uh, hmm, let me see, half an inch of it. Okay, it's doing quite nicely. I don't have to, to clear the drill yet at all. But I may have to. Because it's beginning to clog up there. So as you see it's beginning to clog up there, I'll come back. And then with that side of the room, just flick it off like that. Okay, so I'm just going to do this so I think it's uh, Okay, to clear it, to keep clearing it, stops it binding. You can also, if you want, at this stage, because it's quite deep, that set of the cops, I can have a little lubricant. It's not always necessary, and of course you can use coolant, but uh, I find it on this particular material it's not necessary to do that. So I can feel it cutting all right now. I'm just going to stop it at this stage. Because I want to measure something. Uh, that's gone about an inch deep. Uh, oops. Yeah. What you can do, if you've not, if you've not, you've forgotten what, what you've, uh, the reading is on the tailstock quill. Uh, it's what you can do is this. Oops, let me get this uh, off there. You can just go in there, wind it in, that stop there, you can just put a little bit of chalk mark on there, wind it back, you see the chalk mark there, I need to clear an inch anyway. And if I look at that chart mark, it's uh, about an inch and a quarter. Well, it's difficult to manage it better here. I 
been measuring from the, where the chart mark is. It's uh, clearly an inch and inch and a quarter to the tip. So that's handy for parting off. It it assists for the parting off procedure. I'll just get rid of that. Now <coughs> I've finished with the drill. So before I start machining, I'm going to remove the drill. I'm moving it back here, but also I want to take it out because it's easy to, when you're leaning over, catch your wrist on, on, on the drill and uh, give yourself <laughs> rather nasty scratch or a cut. So I take the drill out, make sure it's clean, and that you can put that away. Shall we leave it there on the bench until later? When I finish this video and I'll put it away then. So what we've got here is a lot of swarf. Move it out of the way. You don't want cluttered up with all chippings and turnings and stuff. So what am I gonna do? Pass it off. <laughs> Not just yet. I have another thing to do and that is when you're doing a when you're doing a uh, this type of uh, adjust uh, I can't say what I'm trying to do now uh, <coughs> a backing block adjusting plates uh, or adjusting block, whatever you want to call it. Um, you've got to put a. This, this one's going to receive a 12 millimeter bolt under under pressure. So, if you have a flat surface and you try to adjust on a flat surface with a 12 millimeter bolt. Like so, for instance, it could turn, and the block what you might push down tends to swivel, and it could swivel it out of line with the hole. So that's one of the reasons I've drilled the hole in the first place. And now I want to make sure <coughs> that it, if it does swivel, it'll always move it back to the centre of the thing. So I'm going to. Just try to get some more action on this for you. Ah. I don't know if you'll be able to see the the depth of the thing, but uh, because of the angle of the get the lighting right, angle of the uh, the camera angle. So it's the best I can do at the moment. So. What I'm going to do, I'm going to sort of recess it slightly. Okay. I think I can do it with this. I can't do it with this too, I just have to use another tool. I can use a boring tool, an actual fact. I think I can get away with this. Yeah. 
So that's enough. So I'm going to tidy that edge up a little bit. Just got a little bit of a, a burr on that because this tool is uh, is the angles at its maximum for this, but there's a little edge built up there which I'm going to get rid of, and this is how I'm going to do it. This is a very useful thing to have this scraper. So this has taken that sharpish edge off there. So now we're gonna be ready for parting off. So and I'm just going to measure this. Swing the parting tool into into position. It's also handy because of that little hole there for parting off. It just it just makes it nice. Um, you don't have to go right through to the centre. And what you can do is to have a small piece of uh, rod something like that with a bit of a screw and when it's brought in I just you can slip that in there and then catch it <laughs> yeah I think I'll do that you can hold your hand underneath but of course uh, you're in danger of cutting yourself on that one so let's part this off here and see Hmm. Well, I think three quarters of an inch will be enough, actually. Uh, yeah. So let's see what we can do. Set that there. I'm feeling thy hand. Parting off nicely. Chips are coming off fine. Okay. Oops. Now this stage. 
I'm going to reduce the thickness of, the thickness of this to, to 5 8 because I think that'll be wide enough for I don't know, maybe do it at an inch right, it doesn't matter to a little bit so here we are Now, <coughs> there's other little hint and tip coming up here. So, <coughs> I'm going to try to get away with parting it off and not revert, turning it around in the chuck to face that edge off there. So, um, I'm going to put a little slight bevel on that face there with this tool, if it will reach. like so but as usual make sure that you don't get your parting tool near that chuck face where it's likely to catch it and then here we go look and just speed it up Put a little bit on there. I could have done it with that tool at that side as well, but uh, never, never, never mind. It's okay. Uh, right. So I'll bring the parting tool back into position. Let's go all the way around again. Oh. Okay. Now. I want to get a clear parting off <coughs> face on this. So, get this position here. Uh, remember, we've got that little little drill thing, drilled hole there, and I can put that in there and stop it. So, I'm going to come in a little bit, little bit more on this cut here. Uh, <coughs> increase the speed slightly. Bit too much in fact. So what I'm going to do now <coughs> is to lock that in position. I'm just going to pull this back a bit here on the cross slide. Put slight cuts on that way. Because that will make it a nice face there. So feeding it in, feeding it in very gently here, so you get a nice smooth finish. Um, might not be able to see it at this angle, but you will want to finish parting it off. Um, someone asked me about this a while ago, and they don't want to leave a pit on the workpiece, what they want. So, so here we go on this. I have locked the cabbage by the way. I'm still feeding it by hand. It's going to be coming off any time now. 
There you go. So it has. Let's see if I can get some light on it. It has left a, a little bit on there, but I think break it off easy. Okay. And then to show you that it's perfectly flat. Okay. Straight edge across it. In actual fact, there's a little bird there where it, where it broke off. Little bird there where it broke off. But we can easily get rid of that like this. That's the the recess bit to stop the screw from sliding off altogether and pushing the mounting the uh, adjusting block off off off, off the uh, center. So and and it moving it completely off. I, I've known it do that. But I just I I designed this particular thing myself, and it works perfectly. Believe me, you, you if you do this and mounting blocks, you'll get the benefits of it. Because there's another benefit you get as well, which I'll show you later. So on this, uh, not finished with this yet, not quite happy about that, but there's no problem because I'm going to remove this material from the chuck, put it there. And then with this one, I can just mount it in the in the chuck here. I'll just clean it a bit. Just there. Okay, so it's Right, it's it's not exactly central, which uh, is not surprising because this is an old chuck, and uh, but we're not going to really machine it. But let's try it again. Yeah, I'm not happy about that. I think we'll get it nearer than that. So we come to another little trick. That's a bit of tall steel. Try it again. It's a bit better, but um, <clears throat> the chuck is an old chuck, and uh, to get it more, it's not quite accurate as it would be. But I'm not going to be machining it, so what I'm going to do is uh, is to get this. Well, it was it. <laughs> 
it is machine here, I suppose, but uh, that wasn't cutting too. I'm going to move that round there and then take that edge off there. And then I'll just test it again with this. And that's taken that, I don't know if you can see it. I'll take it out of the out of the chuck, but it's just it, it's that built up edge, it's taken it off, you see. And uh, that's the objective. So there was no need, need to do a if I wanted to spin this accurately, because I know this is not a very true chuck, I could put it in a four jar chuck and uh, get that down to a less than a thousandth of an inch if necessary of concentricity. So um, back to this then, there's the, the piece where the bolt's going to go, uh, <clears throat> trying to find a, trying to find a bolt, can't find it anyway. Uh, yeah. Well that's better. So if you've got this situation where the bolt's pressing down onto there, it tends to rotate this piece and it might move it over there. That that little trepanning bit there, recess, will also to stop it, if it does that, to stop it moving out and it'll bring it a bit more central so you can get more positive depth. But this is a, a smaller bolt. The bolt that's going to clamp this down, uh, adjust this down I would say, is 12 millimeters bigger diameter on this than this one. So. That's that. Right. <coughs> the other thing is, um, if you look at the Siege Miller machine, I'll just, I'll just come back with this to the Siege Miller machine. Whoa, here we go, here we go, here we go. Right, that's the in question there, and that's where the backing pad is, okay, <coughs> or the adjusting pad, I should say. So I can, I don't think it's worth, I, you know. Can see it. Yeah. I'm starting to get a better view of this. No for power feeds. Ah. Well, that's the end of the towel. So, if you're going to, that's the piece there, and that's the backing, that, that's the adjusting block there. Now, the reason for that all is there, is because. I know some of you will have guessed it already, <laughs> but some might not. But when you, this thing here, weighs like 150 kilos going on that way, if it's a little bit work piece in. And um, when you're positioning th this underneath there to line it up with the bolt, it can be a bit awkward. So before you put the bolt in, you can slide this underneath there, put this piece through the hole where the bolt should be and locate this centrally near enough with the with the bolt there. And that location then, I'll tell you that's a very useful thing to know because it's, it's, it's heavy and you've got to lever it up and slide, slide it in. This is very helpful to do that. Then you can bolt it down. 
So, huh. oops, there you go, there you are. Oops, let's have a look here, what's happening here? Yeah. Got camera angles all over the place here. <laughs> okay, so, if you like this video, <laughs> Give it, give it, give it a like. Share it with your friends and uh, um, subscribe to my channel. I'd, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, I'm mounting the, mounting the subscribers up nicely. Uh, but I'm still a long, a long way off some, what some uh, uh, video producers have got. Uh, but but it, we're starting the right direction, and I really appreciate it. All those who subscribe and things. So share it among your friends. I try to do something a little bit different, and, and leave a comment, and uh, and then that, you might know something I don't. And uh, <laughs> you're learning in this business all the time. 